Patience. So today is part two of the 3D sketching roller blade with uh, Austin and Miko. They're our in-house specialists and uh, they will be hosting the demo today and I'll be just acting as cameraman, so to speak, and uh, asking any questions towards them. And um, I'm happy to shoot over any questions that all of you have out there that, that you may have and happy to shoot them over to Nico or Austin. So um, uh, that's one thing that we wanna really encourage is that as the demo is going along, we really encourage you to ask your questions in the chat and I'll be monitoring that as we, as we go today. So um, for any new joiners, if you guys wanna just maybe introduce yourselves and, and, and uh, mention what you do at Gravity Sketch, Austin, why don't you go first? Sure. I am the lead design consultant at Gravity Sketch and I have a footwear background. So I am a footwear specialist and all that jazz. I've worked on lots of different types of footwear in my career, um, ranging from sandals to winter boots to dress heels, everything like that. Hey guys, my name is Nico. Um, so I'm a, a design consultant at Gravity Sketch. Uh, I primarily work uh, in automotive and also help out in footwear. Um, I'm a former automotive designer, uh, and uh, uh, I also love rollerblading. And so I used to rollerblade a lot when I lived in Paris and um, go around Paris every Friday and Sunday with like a crowd of five to 10,000 other rollerbladers. And it was a lot of fun. So uh, that kind of inspired this project. And so looking forward to continuing to take this to the next level. Awesome. Well, really glad to have you guys today. And if you missed the previous, um, I guess you could say episode of this, uh, Austin and Nico basically started from a sketch and created this roller blade. And um, Austin started laying out these surfaces. Nico is gonna be working on the hard surface details below. And so today we're just continuing that and to bring it to a fully realized um, concept. So um, why don't you guys talk about what your goal is for today? I, I know you guys mentioned that you wanted to get as far as you could. Um, I think maybe if you could talk about what your next steps are, that'd be great. Nico, maybe if you could just talk about like where you're at and where you wanna go with it next. So in the last session, we kind of explored different uh, chassis designs or different design for the skate and uh, ended up going with this kind of crazy off-road uh, platform on the bottom of the boot. Um, so big pneumatic tires and uh, like a kind of an off-road platform. So today what I'm going to try and do is work on the technical bits around the chassis. Um, you can see inside I have some little some little shocks in here that I've uh, mocked up um, and now I'm going to start working on all of the the actual metal bits and the hinges and everything to try and make this look as realistic as uh, possible, make it look like it actually could work. Um, I'll be building out the part that attaches to the to the boot, and then a bunch of little bolts and things like that. And I might redo the wheels a little bit. Um, they got it seems like they got a little skewed, but that's okay. Um, and also, we had a really big update today. Uh, that went out in Gravity Sketch and has a lot of really cool new features. Um, so I might, I might uh, show off a few of the new features uh, specifically pertaining to uh, the sub-D polar symmetry, which is really awesome. There's some, some cool things there um, as yeah, well. So that'd be great. That's what Let's I'll be working on today. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Nico. Yeah, Austin, where are you at with it today? And where, where do you plan on yeah. getting to? So... One thing I should mention, if you were here on the previous episode, you probably see that I changed a little bit of the upper surfaces. So what I did was I went in and um, I didn't do a lot to them. They're very much the same as they were before, except for I merged two of them together. And the main reason that I updated these at all was I wanted to make sure that I had all of my looking upper surfaces that like functioning and looking the way that they should. So. If you see, uh, for example, I can turn off some of these um, and see upper surfaces one, upper two here. So you can see that like, I just made sure to lay out the pieces in a way where they, they're more similar to what they actually would be in a real shoe where they like connect and overlap nicely with each other. Um, 
and they act more like the real pieces because now today my goal is to go in thicken all of these pieces and make them act and look more like real materials um, and then go into like the molded pieces and start adding more detailing do the laces and add binding and stuff like that amazing awesome yeah it's uh it's really been cool watching this come together and see you both work I'll also mention that we're using Gravity Sketch Collab right now, and so that's how we're all able to be in the same space in VR and talk to one another. We're we're just using um, the the in-app audio and video to talk and interact with all each with each other, and then I'm just streaming that to all of you. And so um, it's a really great way to collaborate and work with others in Gravity Sketch. Hence the name Collab. <laughs> um, and in case you missed this. A little detail we actually release collab for free for everyone um, the only limitation is that you get only one collab room that you can invite your friends and colleagues to um, and a maximum of four joiners per any um, at any one time in the room and um, but if you think about it if you have someone that invites you to their room that actually gives you access to their collab room which in theory, you could have access to an endless number of rooms. If you, uh, if you have more friends and they have access to your room, you have access to theirs. So um, this is the whole idea with Colab. So in case you're wondering how we're doing this and how we're talking to each other and uh, how I'm seeing what Austin and Nico are doing, this is, um, this is how we're doing it. And so, uh, yeah, it's a great way to work with each other. So um, one of the reasons why we actually chose this product as well, Rollerblade, is it's got a bit of soft detail and hard detail involved, and we thought that this would be a great way to showcase uh, some of the tools in Gravity Sketch that allow you to do both pretty well. Um, we've, seen, we've seen amazing examples of uh, apparel and soft goods being done in Gravity Sketch, um, as well as hard surface objects as well. So a Rollerblade seems to merge those two things. Austin, you mentioned textures earlier. Does this mean like you're going to get into um, like adding some textures from photos or is that kind of what you're talking about or what, what do you, what was your intention Maybe. with that? Maybe. I think actually what, so I will probably towards the end add textures from photos, but I don't know if I'm going to get into that today or not. Sure. Today, what I'm for sure going to do in terms of, I guess when I spoke to textures, I meant a little bit more about like how there's some pieces that like in this molded piece, for example, here, this is like a flat surface, right? So if I'm gonna, I know I want this to be a lot more, um, to actually have thickness to it. And I might even like take portions of it and go in and really like add textural, like little details to it that that make it feel more special instead of yeah. just having it be like a a soft surface so i might go I in see. and add some ripples or um possibly like now that i know that the shape is what i want i can start like you know extruding pieces or adding hardness in areas to really make it um pop and be and be more special if that makes sense very cool so talking about texturing the actual geometry, which is that's pretty, pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, and I do think I'm gonna eventually change these colors back to something that I actually want them to be like. Um, yeah, because the way you have black. the colors right now, this is really just to help you separate visually each piece, right? Exactly, yep. So these colors are really specific to just letting me see exactly what each piece is doing, making sure that I'm not accidentally overlapping something that I don't want to overlap, um, you know, or like if there's something protruding through another piece, it's really easy to see and see the gaps and stuff when you have everything as different colors. I see. And that probably makes it way less of a headache to work with it. Cause I, I've definitely done many sessions just on my own where I try and color things realistically like really early on and especially if it's like a very muted tone thing um i'll find myself kind of struggling because like i have like a, a pure black and like an almost black material like right next to each other and it's hard to see like what's what um and it seems almost obvious but like i forget like oh i could just change these colors to like something a little bit more 
drastic so I can at least see what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why I kind of have to give my color and material side of my brain a little bit of a like uh, panic <laughs> while I'm going through and working um, because I know that everything I'm doing here is is not real for colors. Let's go down here and check yes. out what Nico's doing. So Nico, it looks like you're working on the bearing. Yeah, I'm wheels? working on the bearing right now. So basically what happened is the wheels got they kind of got skewed. And so I figured I would just rebuild them because they got uh, thrown off a, of the um, the center axis a little bit. And that can happen. And so um, I just figured I, I was I wanted to rebuild these and demonstrate the, the sub D polar array anyways. So I figured I'd, I'd uh, take the opportunity to kind of rebuild the bearing and the whole wheel. Um, as well. So here we have kind of there I just finished the the bearing, um, internal bearing, get it as close as I can, and then kind of the internal part of the wheel. And so now we have, and I'm using the color as well the way Austin does um, to kind of um, mimic the um, the like the or, or not mimic anything, but basically uh, allow me to see what's what parts belong to what. Um, so here now I, I'll make this a bright white and I'll, I'll, I'll color this kind of a darker gray, almost close to black. Um, and I left this yellow because I, I wanted to make sure that I could see what, what was going on with the bearing pieces. Um, but now we are ready to start working. We can actually put the, the spokes in. So the previous wheels, I had kind of this five spoke design and we can do something like that. But there's a really cool new feature with the uh, polar symmetry in sub D. So what I'm going to use here is the ribbon tool. So I actually go down to the to the stroke tool and then go to ribbon stroke and then I'll turn on sub D here and we can turn on polar symmetry and um, we can go all the way up to 12 copies to 12 instances. So I'll start with five and I can, at this point uh, we can start with what however many uh, we want and after today's update you can actually edit the number of copies that you um, you have. So I'm using the same center central axis that I used for the revolve surface here. And I'll just go ahead and start kind of placing, let's see, placing the, uh, the spokes. Now, if I get in here, like I just did, I, just, I accidentally grabbed that and threw it off. So what I'm going to do is just come in quickly to the layers and I'll make a, a new layer for the wheels. This is what I didn't do last time and why the wheels, I think, got uh, moved a little bit. And so using your layers can be really helpful. Um, there's also a new feature uh, on the layers panel that if you intersect the grab sphere with, uh, to any object, you'll be able to see what layer that object is on. Or if you hover over a layer, the object will highlight. So that was released the, in the last week as well. They actually so some really can't... cool new additions. Yeah, they actually yeah, I don't, can't I don't see know. that, but I'll do it on mine. Uh, maybe I can just like touch and see. Yeah, if, make sure you yeah. turn on the, um, yeah. That's actually interesting on Colab, it's um, it's not doing a highlight, it's showing a box next to your name, which is pretty cool. Interesting, yeah, really. Yeah, like it's showing, it's showing me the which layer it's on, but it's telling me that this is your layer. Um, which is pretty cool. So that's awesome. So I'm touching it and it's saying, yep, that's layer number nine, Nico underscore GS. That's pretty cool. So now I can change, I can lock that one and we'll lock, actually we'll lock all of these. There we go. So those are now locked and so I don't have to worry about this. And now I can come in and I can add, we'll go ahead and add a ribbon stroke like this. And you can see that we have five copies, five instances of this. And I created that on a lock layer, so. There we go. And we can go in and edit this now however we want. So with the sub D, now that this is sub D, you can actually make some pretty complex shapes. Um, 
and and it's a pretty cool uh cool object so like here we have this this single rectangle if i turn the uh the smoothing off i can pretty much make like a a pretty pretty wide rectangle here and one way to get like the the kind of split that i had before is i just put two more edge loops here and got rid of the middle part and so that makes it look a little yeah, bit more technical cool. And with the new update, we can now take, we have a slider and we can actually change the number of copies retroactively. So if we want to have a bunch of copies, we can change the number live while we're editing them. So there's five. And then I can uh, take the whole edge loop, for example. We have the auto select loops feature. We can take that in. And. Snap all of that. Put two little edge loops on the on the corners to make them nice and sharp. What a cool new addition to the, the radial symmetry, being able to create sub D objects. That's that's a big one. And so at this point now, we can turn smoothing back on. We have some pretty cool spokes, and let's just for for the fun of it, we can make this look kind of like a retro retro wheel maybe since this is off wood wheel we need a lot of support so we'll have 12 versions of that so now it's like having 24 spokes inside the wheel it's interesting um, it's still showing the five for me i wonder if it's probably an update thing um really yeah interesting it's probably it's probably just not updating over collab it, it might just show up if i re-enter the room or something but um okay yeah that's yeah. an that's I, it looks really cool. Honestly, I believe you, you though. Can you see the 24? <laughs> I believe you that it's um, there. Hold on one second. I'm throwing something on a new layer. Okay, let's see. Um, No, I still see five. You still see five. All right. Mm -hmm. So this probably update. Well, that's probably an interesting. It probably a, a data I mean, this is transfer. a brand new feature that just came out today, so it's possible that there was um, yeah, just a, just a few hours ago a little um, glitch that they didn't notice. Cool. Well, if it if it still has five and it looks good with five, then we can go with five. That's fine with me. Um, Does it look good with five? Let's see. Uh, yeah, it looks good with five. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's what I had last time. So, yeah, but the, I wonder if I unlock and just move this, if I make a duplicate, does that, does a duplicate have multiple, Aaron? It does. Oh my gosh. What? So Seriously, the duplicate updates it. It's probably an update thing. I'm sure a data transfer. I also am just yeah. demoing it really quick on my side, just showing it working live so everybody can see what it looks like. So I can, after the fact, change the number of subdivisions. And so it's work. It's working on, on my side. I like the one where you duplicated it, where it's got more spokes, just, just my own personal preference. I'm also curious to hear what other people think. Yeah, any questions out there, please ask. Um, happy to answer any questions you have. See. Priscilla says these new layer features are much needed. I was so happy when I noticed them. Yeah, glad we can bring that to you. Greg, yeah, it's, we're really happy to bring the highlight thing. I, I I think it's an awesome addition as well. We've had a lot of requests on that on that for a while. So again, like we always say, these features are directly informed by all of you out there. Um, and we're, we're really listening and trying to figure out how to bring solutions to um, to what to what all of you want in your workflow. So happy to bring these features these features out to you. Let's see. I'm gonna just gonna add these. I'm kind of playing around with the polar symmetry because um, you can pretty much merge. It's really cool. You can now together. bake. You can now bake the the objects as well, and then you can merge them. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. And 
yeah it's a it's a huge 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 feature uh update it, it's kind of like one of those small things that can make a world of difference check this thing so. out this was this was not possible in, in gravity sketch like <laughs> six hours ago yeah i mean it was possible it just would have taken you six right. hours to do it right <laughs> yeah <laughs> so radially symmetric sub d complex just shapes super fun to play with and then i could like thicken this if i wanted do something really crazy with it i mean that's that's pretty wild that's pretty cool i could bake that now this is fully 3d printable this is like a closed object i could 3d print this right now I don't know how long this would have taken you, like, in any other program, but it probably would have taken a while. Something like that organic, it depends on the program. In in some programs, like ZBrush, that would have been pretty quick to do. But right. In, um, but ZBrush, like, yeah. I mean, unless you're super proficient with ZBrush, I mean, like, it it still takes a minute. You have to be... Oh, yeah. To do something like this, I mean, you got to be pretty proficient in ZBrush. Because I've used ZBrush myself, and you could totally do something like this, but it would you have to have you, you have to know your way around whereas with gravity sketch i mean the tools the tools are so simple and you know i'm maybe a little biased <laughs> but uh <laughs> you know anyway you're a little bit yeah i think we're all we all become a little biased but maybe that's just because i know for myself um i've always wanted to do th I, I love 3d i started in maya believe it or not i started using maya back in 2005 and there was youtube was just becoming a thing back in the back then um so that probably dates me a little bit but uh i'm saying this because i always wanted to become good at 3d and, and get get proficient with it um but it wasn't really taught in my universities at the time um and the licenses were really tricky um and so like if you wanted any kind of industry software as a student, your options were pretty much to pirate it. Um, and pirating came yeah. with viruses. And then I was a Mac user and all that stuff. So uh, I definitely can say I'm biased to Gravity Sketch because it's pretty much one of the first programs after years of, of uh, working in um, with 3D programs that I'm, I'm able to really feel proficient in making, op making models or, or expressing the designs that can then be taken and, and um, you can get to a really good result. It's not like perfect. It's not like the like absolute perfect because sub D has its own limitations as a technology. Mm -hmm. But you can get to a really good result really quickly. Yeah. Um, and you can work at one to one scale. And that I think that to me is just uh, it, it's really just the, the power within the app. Uh, that's like one of the big powerful things for it. And the fact that I finally like kind of I, I'm working on projects or, that I designed 15 years ago um, that I always wanted to see at one to one scale and to be able to do that is just pretty amazing um, you know yeah. and, and always having wanted to do it and never being really able to get proficient enough with alias or rhino finally you're able to see the, your idea it's pretty awesome. It really is. It, it, it I and I totally relate on that. I feel the exact same way, uh, and that's why I switched to it when I was in school. I've been using Gravity Sketch for the last maybe five or six years now, and it became one of my primary tools because um, it just allowed me to get my ideas out the quickest and and with the with the most. I would say, like what you said, I was able to get out what exactly I was thinking in my mind what I wanted it to look like and um, could have done it maybe in like Fusion 360, which is what I used a lot as well, or even SolidWorks potentially, but it would have taken five, maybe even 10 times the time. Um, so yeah, totally relate on that. Um, I see Austin, you're doing some pretty interesting texturing there. That's pretty cool. Well, I was trying to see, cause it's the only thing I have in my library right now. And I was like, could I just, take this transparent PNG and like texture it and then also add a color on top to make it more solid. But no, it's all transparent. So I'm not going to actually use that one, but 
it yeah i did i was just trying to differentiate these layers a little bit um will you guys do me a favor and see if you can grab this pink surface at all this one the pink one what are you serious yeah hold on let me let me just grab it edit and then now 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 you should be able to <gasps> now it moves okay thank you yeah i was having a fun time with that so appreciate it Christian Christian says huge time saver. Awesome. Yeah, if any of you have any questions or comments, please share. We're this is this is a demo and a live demo and and part of that is answering any questions that you have um, about this workflow and about Gravity Sketch tools in general. So um, we're all ears for you. Um, and I'll talk about this just for a minute for anybody that uh, may have missed the previous episode, but Austin, you had these pre-made uh, parts that you also made in Gravity Sketch that you will that you might be using later, um, like the strap and for the dial. For sure. And yeah, um, I'm did, you want to talk a little, use those. did you want to talk a little bit about that? Like what your intention was, like having those parts available to you like offhand? Sure, yeah. So my thoughts are that like, I have certain parts that I use a lot in different, in different uh, models. And I think a really good example of that is this one right here, which is like a uh, lace holder, like a metal I stay lace holder thing. And so I use stuff like this constantly on lots of different types of shoes and boots and whatever. And so it's really, really nice to have these like prefabricated um, ERS models that I can go in and edit, but they also, I can just like bring them in and they're ready. And so this is also like a buckle that I had made and I might need to modify it, right? Cause if I actually go on here and place it, this is more for like a snow boot originally. So it's not, it's definitely like puffier than, um, than this model itself. So I might have to modify it to like fit in, but it's really nice to have available. And then again, this boa um, piece as well is something really nice to just be able to like go in and add it and, and move it around and kind of just figure out like what I want to do, you know, before. Yeah. And then you can of course go in and make new parts on it or change it in any way, but it's really nice to just have. And pretty it's soon we're going to have a, um, a pretty awesome updated asset library where whenever we are make something like if I make a rollerblade wheel that I think is cool that people could use, or if we have zippers or, um, other other hardware that uh, maybe be uh, cool to have in footwear we can we'll be able to update that and there'll be native grs files uh so you can just bring it right into your project and edit it and, and work with it so yeah that's, that's going to be awesome we're really excited about that yeah that's going to be really great a way to just like because because we we as a team make so much stuff in gravity sketch um spreading the wealth with that somehow by just adding it to the library that everybody can access, I think it's just going to compound uh, the creative ability of the for the community and any new joiners too that maybe don't know exactly like how they want to start building things or maybe if they want to dissect something. Um, which we have a great we have great stuff in the gallery right now, but I think this will compound even greater the uh, the creative abilities and creative potential in there. So that would be awesome. So I see you took the new wheel and put it onto the, put underneath there, Nico. Um, is there like, can you talk a little bit about the suspension system here um, and kind of where your brain, where your brain's at with that? Um, I know last time you were, you were showing a cool technique on making the the spring, I thought that was really interesting. Um, you don't have to show it again, but um, yeah, are there, is your, are you have, do you have any thoughts on like how the, I guess the suspension system works or are you, do you think you might evolve it or change it? I don't know, what are your, where are your thoughts on that at the moment? Well, I need to figure, I kind of need to figure it out because right now, uh, you know, coming back, uh, coming back after, after the initial sketch, 
Um, the initial idea was that it was kind of an independent suspension for the front and front and rear wheel, and then the um, the middle wheel could could kind of play on on uh, like a hinge on on the um, between the between the two the two arms. Um, but I'm not really sure if that'll work. So mechanically, um, I'm going to go ahead and design it and mock it up. Um, I'm, I'm not a mechanical engineer. I wanted to become a mechanical engineer, but when they said I should go to community college and uh, take another two years of math, I was never really good at math, so I <laughs> went into industrial design instead. Um, One thing I'll say, though, shows. Nico, I don't want to interrupt you. <laughs> I, I feel like this is a really great thing to mention right now because I feel like as a designer, you might have those questions for your engineer, right? And yep. they could come in here and look at it. Yeah, exactly. So you can mock it up or you could you could take this and bring it into a program, uh, you know, export, export the model and put it into a program where you could actually test that. Like you could take this, bring it into um, Solid Edge or SolidWorks or, or Infusion, um, put some pivots and stuff and and you know, do some compression tests with a shock or something, and you could see if it would actually work. So, I kind of mocked this up last time. Um, I'm going to try and make it look pretty cool. Um, I have an idea where the rear arm. Um, let's see. Let me highlight that in red. The, this rear arm would have its own kind of set section, and then the front one would have its own section like this. And both of those would hint pivot on the same kind of floating pivot, um, and then I have to figure out what how the, the the middle wheel is just kind of going to be suspended in between the two. Um, so we'll try and make it look good, and hopefully that'll work. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's the cool thing about Gravity Sketch. Whenever it gets into complex mechanical things like this, or there's things that kind of interlock or interweave in between each other. Um, I honestly couldn't imagine trying to do it in another program, to be honest. And, and I know lots of people do in the industry, but um, it just gets so mind-numbing, I feel like. Uh, and, and oftentimes you have to revise and, and come back to it and, and tweak it just to just because you find that it doesn't work. Whereas with Gravity Sketch, it's, it's right there in front of you and, and you can get down into you know, you could scale this thing like, like right now, this thing is the size of a house to me right now. And so because it's the size of a house, I can get right up to these tolerances next to the wheel. I can get right up into the suspension system and see how everything's really interacting and engaging, connecting together. Um, and to me, that's invaluable when you're trying to solve these types of design problems. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. I'll just I just want to add on that like one thing is do not be afraid to use infinite scale in gravity sketch it's one of the best features is how 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 much you can zoom in on something um, and work on my new details so, so when you're using it you know get used to squeezing both controllers a lot because zooming in and out is really um, it really can can transform your workflow but also like uh, your model as well. You can really get into the into the details that is just quite quite difficult to do in on like a two D screen. You can do it um, for sure, but it's just not the same. Not at all the the, the same. And even for those of you watching on the screen right now, um, you know I have it scaled up to a very large size, but it's hard to perceive without sort of the depth perception that you get with VR. Um, which is just one of the things that we, we say, it's just, you, you just have to try it. Um, but you know, you just, if you've never tried VR, you definitely just got to take our word for it, that it is, um, it is a factor that, that you discover when you, when you actually put the headset on there. Um, but yeah, good point there, Nico, don't be afraid to scale it up, uh, because you can always scale it back down. And now I've got it like maybe a fourth the size that it would actually be in real life. And this is a great, to me, um, scaling things really small is a, is a great way to see like the object in its, in its whole sort of design, almost get like a holistic view of the design as it would 
sit um, as it would sit in front of you. Uh, like, you know that technique that artists do where they squint one eye or they squint their eyes looking at a painting or a sketch? Or a sketch? Um, it's actually a real technique that helps you filter out details that aren't necessary um, and look at the sketch or the painting as a whole, uh, looking at the colors and looking at the sketch lines, but almost like kind of blurring it, looking at it as a whole to see if there's like too much detail or too much emphasis in what, one area that there shouldn't be. I almost feel like scaling a model down in Gravity Sketch does a similar thing to that where you can see almost the design overall and see like, is there anything that's out of place or anything that needs to be adjusted? Um, it's a great technique to do as well. Let's see here. Austin looks like she's frozen. Hopefully she's doing all right. We've got a few comments. Let's see if we can read those. got okay, you guys are doing an amazing job. I still have a long way to go future wise, but it's the right path for sure. Thanks for the kind words, Keelan. Yeah, definitely um, limiting your time in VR is a good thing. I, I um, you know, we've talked to people that they, they say they spend hours in VR. Um, I try to limit any one session to like an hour long. Um, sometimes it's hard to, for the team members with the work that some of us do. But um, yeah, just like any other experience with a screen, you definitely want to throttle that experience um, or that time spent. We've also put together a, like a, a health and safety document. Um, that, oh, good point. And and so that's on our on our health thing. But we've in because we spend a lot of time around VR, um, and in for us, you know, this is our job. This is this is how we put food on the table. We want to make sure that we're doing it uh, as safely and and you know, pacing it as. as facing ourselves as much as possible as well. So we took a, a hard look at, at things and there's some, you know, pretty easy techniques like um, in these one hour sessions, it's a little tricky to do it, but if you're just doing it on your own, um, every 20 minutes, you, like in Gravity Sketch, if you look on your non-drawing hand controller, so the one, uh, the one with the blue and purple button, uh, if you look over um, on the handle of it, there's a clock on it and you can actually point to that clock um, and there, if you point and pull the print trigger on your drawing hand, you have, uh, you can show the clock, uh, but you can also set reminders for, um, every, uh, like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, etc. Um, and that clock will, uh, that, that'll just pop up every 15 minutes. It'll tell you, okay, you know, 15 minutes has gone by. Um, and we recommend like basically rule of thumb is every 20 minutes, take the headset off for 20 seconds, stare at something 20 feet away, um, and then you can keep going back at it. Uh, the other few few other things, if you don't have blue light filtering lenses, um, uh, some blue light filtering lens inserts will really help. Uh, prescription lens inserts, if you wear glasses, will really help. Um, and uh, a good head strap, a good kind of more rigid head strap than the standard one that might come with a headset, for example. The Quest 2 comes with a a cloth one um it's fine for like really short sessions but if you're going to spend more time in it we highly recommend getting a more rigid strap um, that'll really help with comfort and also just kind of eye strain um because the the headset won't be moving around as much on your face so there's some pretty simple things that you can do that will make things more ergonomic and and um you know preserve your eyes but I've also talked to the eye doctors and, you know, their main concerns is um, prescription inserts if you have lenses and then just pacing your eyes the same way you would at a computer. Look at something 20 feet away for 20 seconds every 20 minutes. If you remember that, then you, you'll, you should be okay. Yeah, thank you. Great points, Deco. Um, yeah, check out that health and safety doc uh, for more information too. Um, Nico, can you say again where to access 
the the health and safety document? I believe that's in our um, uh, in our updated knowledge base. So we recently uh, updated and, and rolled out uh, our, a, a new version of our knowledge base. So you can find that on our website. I think it's um, under Gravity Sketch. And then the, if you uh, click the link to learn, it'll take you to the new knowledge base. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for laying out those points. Definitely important to know as we delve further into the future of VR. So, um, and I think the technology hopefully will help mitigate um, these as well. So hopefully there'll be a convergence there with, with best practices alongside the technology getting a little bit more mindful. Um, got a few comments here, a few questions. Um, has anyone suggested an instance group feature where you could update the first group and the change update in all instances of that group? Um, yes, we've definitely talked about instancing. Um, and uh, there's, there's already a form of it in Gravity Sketch at the moment with the, I think radial symmetry is, is sort of a form of instancing. Um, but uh, we have talked about that. I can't remember if there's a, if that's more of like a technical challenge, I think at the moment. Um, but we, we have been looking into it is the, is the answer I can definitely give. So we have been looking into it. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a feature anytime soon. We'll definitely need to do a little bit more research into how it would be implemented and what the use cases and workflows would be for using it. But we definitely have heard a lot of people in the community saying that they want instancing and we were looking into it for sure. Um, you know how you can revolve, recover a revolve axis with highlight, half left trigger. Can you do that with polar symmetry tool? Um, yes. Yes, it's basically the same, uh, the same way, right? Is that correct, Nico? You do it the same way with both. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, any any uh, function that uses an axis can recover the axis the same way. So if even even if you make like a primitive shape and you use the center line, or you set like the center line axis. So I'll just set a an axis for a plane here or a cube, right? Um, I can move this cube over here, and then if I come to the revolve tool, I can recover the axis actually from the cube if I pull the, the trigger down. I've moved this cube, and now I can make a revolved surface here. Um, I can move this revolved surface over like that, recover the axis again, and then we'll go in and do a polar, polar array. Um, so here's the polar array. I'll move this polar array over. And if I go back to revolve function, intersect the polar the polar symmetry, I can get that axis again. And there you go. So um, any object that has the axis, you can recover the axis just by intersecting the grab sphere and lightly pulling the trigger on the non-drawing hand. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for demoing that. Uh, and great question. Thank you for asking that. Let's see. Um, instance, yes, that would be awesome. It, I was asking for that so much. I felt like I was nagging after a while. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, Greg. Uh, this is definitely something that we're looking into um, and may happen in the future. I don't know if it's a near future thing, but it's definitely on the radar of the, of the engineer team, so. Um, yeah, keep 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 bring it up because uh, the more you talk about it, the more we see it's something that people want. So um, yeah, definitely don't shy away from mentioning it. There's also just like a lot of groundwork that's been do being that's ha been done um, over the last year that yeah. allows for things like instancing and sub polar symmetry. Um, to be a lot easier to build once you get the, those foundation groundwork. So, you know, just like when you build a, a high rise or a building, um, you know, the first year is almost always underground and there, people don't see much and they think that the construction's not happening, but you gotta build a, a strong foundation. And then, and then all of a sudden the high rise, you know, 30 stories go up in 30 days and it's kind of like, what, what just happened? 
Um, <laughs> that's possible because you have a good foundation. So it's similar with memory sticks. Like the acceleration is happening, and uh, know, knowing uh, or hearing your requests, um, it really does help. But there's been a lot of groundwork that makes it so that we can start doing some really cool things pretty quickly. Yeah, great points. Um, another vote for instances from Priscilla. <laughs> awesome, loud and clear. Um, Kulon says, didn't know about the reminders. Thanks, we'll definitely use it. Um, There's yeah. anybody out there who has not uh, done footwear in Gravity Sketch before who's looking at this for like the first time. One of the things I love to mention is how quick you can create laces. That was probably yeah. one of my biggest like wow moments when I first started using the program. Um, in comparison to other 3D modeling tools, it was like, just slightly blew my mind a little bit, just how quick you can modify and um, move things like like laces. I'm just bringing that up because I just created a bunch of laces. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, anybody out there new to footwear in Gravity Sketch? Yeah, you pretty much laid that, that lace down, I mean, in, in no time. Yeah, it was mostly just making sure I get the tension right, because that's like, this is going to be different than a normal lace, right? It's a BOA lace system, so it's like wire. It's not like cloth, so it's got like a really, it's very tight tension. You know, that's, that's a thought that I had recently. I was thinking literally exact, exactly about about this, about about lacing and, and things that are have tension and being taught between points. And I was thinking to myself, if I was doing this like in Blender or another program, I wouldn't even like, my brain couldn't even think about tension um, because I'd just be worrying about drawing the right shape. Whereas like in Gravity Sketch, it's so simple that you can actually start thinking about things like where it's gonna be more tight or more taut, um, you know, depending on how it's being pulled and the direction and when if even even if like one's overlapping another if it's, it's gonna have like a little bit of a bump because it's overlapping like you can start thinking about really in detail of like how it's gonna look which is just cool to me that's yeah. just like a and i mean and now i'm going in and doing some crazy stuff where i can like start puffing the tongue up even in between places right because yeah, like if they're really awesome. tight in the middle you can like start to do little Puffies. That's a technical term. Puffies. Take note, I'm everybody. Joking. I'm joking. That was Take a joke. Take note if you're looking for industry industry terminology. <laughs> it's awesome. And what is this material you have on um, on this piece here? Like, is this a? I think that's of, the clay material. Is it really? And so I've noticed that, like, when I'm making shoes the clay material looks a lot like TPU, which is a material that is used quite frequently for anything that is like a, like a hot melt type thing, or like it's a type of plastic basically that's just used a lot in footwear um, for, for different like surfaces. And it's used a lot even for like abrasion resistance and stuff like that. So I've started anything where I'm like, ooh, I want that to kind of be TPU-esque I might just use the clay material because it looks a lot like it. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Wow. Yeah, it just had so the the shading was really interesting next to the flat shaded object, and it was just kind of tricking my eye there. I was just curious about that. Yeah, and then I have reflective on the toe and the heel. Um, I see. But since it's yeah. black, it's just a little bit like different for each. I tried to because I wanted this to be all like blacks and grays, so I would just threw in some different materials that would kind of show the different patterning and pieces, for at least while we're in here, you know? Um, but also still not be like clown shoe, so. It looks really awesome. Keelan says, I'm a game dev, so I'm interested mostly about low poly modeling, though laces can be important for low poly cables too, or grass. Yeah, thanks for sharing your thoughts. 
Yeah. Did you, um, I just, oh, sorry. I was going to ask Kilo what what kind of games you develop, uh, you you work for. Um, yeah. What were you going to What were you guys going to say? Sorry. Go ahead. I just wanted to show you something. I was going to I was going to show another feature really quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. Please do. So apparently this has been around for a few weeks, um, but uh, uh, it's it's a pretty cool update on the uh, Revolve Surface tool. If you go into edit mode, usually you only have this little um, this little uh, seam on the Revolve Surface tool, but now you can convert a Revolve Surface to an eight-section subdivided surface. So I'm going to go ahead and convert this to the subdivi subdivided surface. So this revolve surface now is, is subdivided. Oh, that's cool. Which means that I can take this arm that I made, for example, and I can merge it. Merge it. Um, and so now I have these two bits of, of geometry, and I can start working to merge merge this um, to the the surface, so to the the circular part. Um, it's really, really a That's cool uh, feature. I'm um, something that I'm really, really excited about. So, like, I can take this surface off and start moving, uh, merging these points on it. So, I just kind of wanted to show you that you can now uh, convert revolved surfaces into um, sub-V surfaces, and that, combined with the polar symmetry and the fact that you can bake it, you can start doing some really crazy things. That's awesome. What a great workflow too. Um, and to, especially to create these more complex um, objects where you need something to be kind of perfectly round, intersecting with something that's like perfectly straight and rectangular. Um, there's just kind of no other way to do that except for what you've just described, which is creating two separate objects and then merging them together. Um, See, Kilon says currently working on sci-fi first-person survival game, bow building mechanics. Awesome, glad you can join us. Um, love the new pass-through background feature on Quest Two. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> they're, they're asking if that works on um, collab, and I actually don't know the answer to that because I haven't tried it. Um. Good question because I also just tried it for the first time today and I did come into collab with pass through on myself um, earlier today in a different session, but it didn't affect anybody else. So maybe Jaren, if you could see if you can yeah. turn on your pass through right now. Yeah, actually, can you remind me how to do it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, so it's, it, it won't work. It won't work for Jaren because he's tethered and you're using oh, tethered. Oh, because he's version. tethered. Yeah, it only right. works for untethered untethered quests, so that's something okay. to keep in mind. Okay, um, yeah, I'll have to try that then in another session. But, yeah, um, earlier today, though, I did try it, because, um, you know, just for everybody on the call, like, this, we are so fast with our updates that, like, our consultant team and stuff try it for the same time as you guys do, usually. So, um I tried that today and I was able to go into a session and have pass through on, but it didn't affect um, anybody else in the, in the room. Yeah, that's another thing too. Once we make something and it's ready to, ready to go out, we pretty much just put it out. We don't really sit on it for very long. Um, and so I, I think that's ultimately the beauty of, of the new features is, um, yeah, we just want to get it out. Let's see. Um, a little off topic, are you guys planning to implement a second symmetry plane to help out with building front seats in a car interior, for example? So like another, I think you're asking, asking about a symmetry plane like on another axis maybe? Um, I can yeah. do a quick demo if, it, if that'll help. If you, if yeah, you want to do a yeah, car seat. Um, so you can use the existing, let's come over, sorry, I'll come over here behind the rollerblade. I'll just do this with the ribbon tool, the sub -view ribbon tool. Um, so what you can do is you can make a, I guess, let's just, let, oops, let's say this is our car seat. Something like this, right? And we'll, we'll take the ribbon and then take this edge out and then we'll kind of grab the whole edge. And there's a, 
a quick, a very quick car seat. Um, one thing to note is that uh, symmetry, let's give a little bit more bolster. There we go. Um, sub D symmetry is inherent on the surface, meaning that once you've created this and you've kind of moved this inner edge over the axis of symmetry, this surface retains the symmetry. So if you pull the car seat out like this, I can still edit it and the changes I make to the seat, even if it's not on the axis of symmetry, uh, will the, the changes I make to the actual surface will be symmetrical. Once I'm done, if I want to reflect this seat back over, then I can bake the mirroring and then I can re-mirror this car seat over. And so now you have both car seats. I understand, I do understand that, for example, once you bake it, you lose the symmetry on this and then, but um, this is now a mirrored copy. So if you make a change over here, it'll make a change in the same spot, but over here as well. So um, that's like what, what I ha usually recommend doing is if I back up here just a little bit, let's see here. Here we have this, this seat. Um, I usually make one master copy, leave it on the axis of mirror, the mirror axis, pull it away from the car, and then I'll make a, a copy of it. And I'll use that copy to make the other ones. If I ever need to go back and edit the actual seat itself, I always have the master sitting on the axis in front of the vehicle. Yeah, great so. points. Uh, also, Nico, if you want to show too, real quick, that seat, how you maybe wanted to put it back on the mirror plane. Oh yeah. That's a good little this is, uh, trick. This is going to be a little challenging because you can't see it. Um, oh, that's uh, true. Japan, maybe I can do it myself. Yeah, you should do You should do it so that they can see it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So basically I think what I do is I get out the tool belt, right? And I touch yep. the object with the move tool. And so what you'll notice here is there's a little icon at the top left and it's the little, our, our mirror icon. And if I go and touch it, it says recenter onto world mirror. If I click that, I now have snapped the chair back onto the center axis. So if you moved it earlier or you it was askew and accidentally and you're like, oh, I didn't mean to do that, that's a great way to put it back on the axis as well. So just another little tip there for you. But thank you for showing that, Nico. That was really good. I hope that answers your question. Um, let's see. Uh, whoever asked that, I think that was Felix asked that question. Um, let's see. One feature I would like to see is the ability to hide faces so it's possible to make only a specific area of the model visible without the need to extract it to separate the model. Um, Keylon, yeah, it's a great, it's a great comment. Um, we've definitely been exploring solutions on like selectively editing things, um, masking things. You know, we've, we've had some discussion around masking selection. You're talking about hiding a specific face. Um, and this is definitely something I've seen in traditional modeling software for sure. Um, I think we definitely would want to get more insight and research as to, you know, how this would be useful in, in Gravity Sketch, uh, in workflows using Gravity Sketch. But, um, Definitely interesting one for sure. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't know if I've heard that one specifically before, but yeah, we could definitely we could definitely look into that. Um, and and honestly, I, I want to make a kind of a broad statement too that there's so many f tools and features in tools like Blender and Maya and all these 3D tools that sometimes people want to see in Gravity Sketch. Um, and oftentimes as a team, we have to figure out, you know, is this, does this make sense to have in Gravity Sketch? You know, because at the core, Gravity Sketch is really about getting your ideas out of your mind into 3D as quickly and as seamlessly as possible. And if there's a tool that can be added to Gravity Sketch that helps you do that um, and doesn't get in your way, then, then we add that. And so every new tool and feature that we, that we consider always has to run through these filters of, you know, is this, does this make Gravity Sketch better? Does it make getting your ideas out, you know, of your mind, does it make that process faster? Is it in your way? You know, what's the UI around it? Um, can we tie it to a physical sort of um, uh, 
you know, sort of a physical interaction with the VR environment. There's all these filters that we run through. So um, we're definitely not just trying to translate 3D tools and features into VR. That's not at all the mission of Gravity Sketch. Um, and, uh, and so, and so I just want to make that quick, I just wanted to make that broad statement because sometimes, um, you know, people in the community want to see like, you know, Booleans, for example, is another huge one. <laughs> so, and, um, and our, our answer to Booleans is, is more so like, how can we have that workflow or have that result that Booleans gives you without maybe doing actual Booleans in Gravity Sketch? Because quite frankly, it's a very complicated um, process to do in VR. So how can we give that result? How can we have that workflow um, that gives you that same result? But great questions, great thoughts. Really appreciate it. Um, let's see. It looks like the, it's really coming along here. Guys, this is awesome. Yeah, I think it's going to be cool looking. So we're pretty much right at an hour. Um, did you guys want to make any comments? Um, we could probably close it off for today and then um, pick it up for the next episode. But did you guys want to talk a little bit about like where you've gotten to and maybe where you want to get to next with it? Sure, yeah. For me, I feel like I'm almost done with most of the detailing and I'm probably gonna go in and just add a couple of like patches and like some more like crisping details in other places to make sure everything has those like hard edges that I want in certain areas. Um, but then that's pretty much it for the upper. I mean, the upper is uh, is fairly complete at this point. Yeah, it's looking really, really good. What about you, Nico? So I, um, I, I spent all the time, I, I redid the wheels and then uh, I built the, the interface between the boot and the rest of the chassis. And then I uh, focused on building these kind of drop arms um, here and working with them in sub D. So I used the thicken tool. You can see here how I took that revolve, that revolve surface tool and then a, a, basically a thickened surface and I created a single surface out of it. Um, and so uh, now next, next step is to get the little get the little uh, part for the middle wheel and then uh, all the small little details cutting holes for the axles and things like that um, but yeah I think another hour in this and it'll be it'll be done we'll have a really cool looking uh, skate that was created collaboratively um, and I think one of the other cool things just to mention about this is what's really wild is um, I'm in Colorado, uh, Austin's in Minnesota, and Jaren's in Texas, um, and we're all working on this together. And I mean, it doesn't doesn't really matter the distance, but it's the fact that we can all do this uh, collaboratively um, with three different, completely different backgrounds and three different locations uh, just goes to show kind of the, the the power that this this tool can unlock in terms of collaboration. So true. Yeah, great points uh, with that, Nico. Yeah, it's 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 amazing we're all in different spots, um, and you've you've both have been able to create this very compelling, very realistic model um, in a total of what two hours? I think total. You guys have done this together, um, yep. and you could throw this in a key shot, whatever you want, and do some some really nice renders of it right now if you wanted. Um, but yeah, we'll have uh, we'll have another episode following up with this, um, taking this uh, this shoe this uh, I almost said shoe there. It is kind of a shoe, but uh, I mean, it's rollerblades. Like kind of a shoe. <laughs> rollerblade rollerblades to the next level, um, and taking it all away. So, really, just want to thank all of you out there that have been watching and and uh, ask and for your questions. We we really love your questions and, and answering them. So, um, yeah, thanks so much, and make sure to stay tuned for the next one. We'll be announcing that. Um, probably in a, I don't know, like a few weeks, maybe maybe a month, um, at the longest. And uh, yeah, thank you all for joining.